stepping away from the car a little bit because as you can see it's uh, I got it up in the air running and that's part of the deal if you do it by the book you gotta have the car running and you're gonna have to bring it up to 104 degrees between 104 and 113 I believe I'll put the correct temperature right there in the corner uh, let's get to it I'm gonna show you exactly what you're supposed to do once you get the temperature Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to the channel. This is the Vikings Garage. I want to first and foremost thank you all for all your support. Uh, these videos are taking traction finally, and I appreciate that. A lot has to do with a thumbs up. Don't ask me why, I have no idea. And in today's episode, we're going to address something that we left off in the last episode for the maintenance series, and that is the transmission fluid filter. So I was reading the comment section and somebody mentioned, actually the word they used was that he was very disappointed that on my transmission fluid change video that I did not replace the filter for it. So guys, I don't want to disappoint anybody. So why don't we just get right to it? For today's project, these will be the parts that we will be replacing. I will also at this time replace most of the screws that hold the transmission pan. Uh, 14 is the socket size you're looking for. Um, as always, do your best not to make a mess and um, lose your train plug. I certainly hope for those of you that are going to attempt this job that you do have a lift as uh, the position you have to work in to be in your back, it's going to be a little tough. I will at this time uh, totally approve the use of a power tool because let's face it, we are removing them. But to be honest with you, I would also suggest that you do apply some penetrant oil of your choice a few days before because I have seen these screws break in the transmission housing and that can turn into a really bad day for you. Try not to take a bath. And there she is, ladies and gents. Excuse the noise in the shop, but this is what it looks like with the panel. That's the filter in question. Obviously, you got four 10 mil holding it. And uh, yeah, also very cool. For those that don't know what it looks like. This is your dipstick, basically. And do make sure to clean these magnets as they are. I'll show you in a second here, as soon as I fish it out. Um, yeah, dirty. So clean those up and place them in the same exact spots. There's four of them. Once again, it's totally okay to use your power tools here because as you will understand, this is a very tiring position to be working in. Um, Guys, there's uh, four of them, and these things are not all that tight. They should come off very easily. Uh, of course, be, be aware that there is still fluid trapped in there, as you will see in a second. I hope you guys like this format, because I've been advised in the past not to put too crazy of a music right in the middle of a video. So I'm letting you guys watch this in real time, how long this job actually takes. Let's uh, make sure to discard the old O-ring. As I showed you guys before, get a brand new O-ring. And there's a little trick. So this is exactly where it's supposed to go. See that? All you want to do, very simple. Grab some of this uh, transmission fluid. And just like so. That's all there is to it. Now, ever so gently, Push it up. It should slide right up, just like that. All these, all these lubricate that uh, O-ring, guys. You don't want it sliding off on you. And these do not require a lot to tighten them up. It's actually only 10 newton meters of uh, pressure, which obviously I highly recommend 
use a torque wrench. Ten newton meters, guys. Let's see. Am I going to need an extension? Probably oh, not. Might want to get a pipe. Spot that's on. Just want to show you guys why we are replacing most of these with the weather here in the good old New Jersey. Some of these uh, required actually a nine mil to get them out, and it's supposed to be a ten. So why not just put new ones? You know. New gasket guys, only goes in one way. You wanna look for the curvature here and just place it like so. Do not apply silicone. This is all you're gonna need. Obviously with a rag, clean your surface. Should be, for the most part, pretty clean, but you always need to make sure you keep it as clean as possible. Here we go. Let's get this puppy out. In his resting place. Take your time, one screw at a time, no rushing. And again, these guys, to torque them down, believe it or not, it's even less. And the filter, it's actually seven Newton meters. So please do not over torque these things. You will snap these bolts in no time, I can assure you. Ask me how I know it. Okay, I'm gonna be honest. I don't think it's four days, so you think you ever will get stuck, so it's probably going to find the best spot. <laughs> Alright, so guys, you definitely want to go in a crisscross pattern. Is it mandatory? No. Should you do it that way? Yes. Why? I don't know. I've always done it this way. I believe you get a better seal that way, so as you can see, do it by hand. Try mat by hand. <laughs> While he's using your gun. Uh, this is the part in which I fast forward. He's like, he's like, yeah, and he's, he's got a gun. <laughs> yeah, that's definitely gonna make it to the video, I can assure you. Send it in the gun, baby. As far as the fill plug, guys, I don't know how well I showed it on the last video. It sits right up there. All you really need to get that sucker out is uh, 24 mil. Definitely want to show you guys a close up of the fitting that we have. Uh, this is again specialty Toyota part that works together with this guy, connects on that end. And for this job, I would strongly recommend that obviously stick to the World standard, Toyota fluid only, and uh, you probably need four and a half, so you gotta buy five quarts of this guy. I do not recommend you using anything else. If you're wondering how does the filter look after 164,000 miles, well, other than the slime that's on the outside of it, you really can't see anything because all you see is metal casing on either end. So uh, the element, how does it look? I am not really sure. So again, guys, as previously stated, you hook up a scan tool to your car and what you want to do is monitor the transmission fluid temperature. And uh, the magic number is uh, 104, between 104 and 113, which we are now. As you can see, I could technically do it already. But as previously stated, you can get yourself a little uh, gadget like this, Arbor Freight, I believe, sells them. Very inexpensive. Point the laser, and you, my friend, just found out yourself without a scan tool. Once you have reached optimal temperature, then the one with the Allen, which is the number five, that's the one you want to open. And I'm going to show you guys what it is you're looking for. As you can see, I overfilled it, 
on purpose and I'll show you guys exactly what you should be expecting. that path great you know separating then you know you're at the correct level that's it you my friend have just adjusted the level to the correct specifications Always, always, new gasket, guys. And then, of course, torque it to specs. Obviously, it goes without saying, and everything's said and done. Should look something like this. And obviously, do not forget to put the upper fill plug. The gasket, as previously stated, you can reuse it. It'll be perfectly fine. Mine looks a little shiny right now, but I can assure you this thing is good to go. I'm not really sure what happened here. I think I ran over something. I've been trying to clean it off, but eh, you know how that goes. Wonder what the filter looks like on the inside? Well, wonder no more. There it is. It's basically, if you were to ask me, it looks like a mesh. I don't know how well that shows on camera. Can't go by any of this debris because it was all caused by me opening the filter. But that's what it looks like. It's basically a mesh. So what did you guys think? Uh, is this something that you're going to try to tackle yourself at home? By all means, I certainly hope you have a lift because I can only imagine doing this on the floor. It's got to be painful. Uh, after thinking about it for a little while, my personal opinion is if you are towing with your vehicle, Chances are you probably should do your uh, transmission fluid filter at some point. If you're not, you probably shouldn't bother with it. That's just my personal opinion. Uh, what are your thoughts on that? And as always, guys, I want to thank you for watching and do stay tuned because there is a little surprise in the trunk of this car for the next episode. Care to see what I mean? Well, I thought you'd never ask. Let's see if we can do this backwards. Ooh, what's in there? What's in there? What's in the trunk? Ready, ready? Ah, here we go. Ooh, big box. I wonder what that is. I'll see you on the next one. Ladies and gentlemen. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to the trip. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to the channel. This is the Vikings Garage. So on today's episode, I was going through the comment section on our latest, latest, last maintenance video. Man, 